Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Manulife Asset Management's Investor Education video series. I'm Zed Matubis and today we will discuss our insights on the local stock market. Joining me today is our Head of Equities, Mark Canizares. Hello, Mark. Hello, Zed. Glad to be here. Mark, I'd like to start off with where we are right now in terms of the Philippine stock market. How has it performed this year given the impact of COVID-19 and the lockdowns it brought with it? The stock market had wide swings this year, Zed. It dropped by 31% in the first quarter following the implementation of the strict lockdown measures in March, which lasted till mid-May for Metro Manila. The market regained some footing in the second quarter, rising by 17% as the government eased the lockdown measures, allowing for activity to restart for some sectors, although still at a restrained pace. As of September 25, the stock market was down around 5.6% quarter-to-date as the acceleration of COVID-19 cases has impaired the productivity of the broader sectors of the economy. However, the PSAI index has been above the 5,500-point level since June, staying off the lows that we have seen in the first quarter. It's great that at least the market has recovered from the lows of March. Let us now look at the sector view. Given the new normal environment that has emerged because of the lockdowns and the fear of the pandemic, which sectors have suffered and which have performed well? That's a very interesting question, Zed. Let's look at the movement of select stocks in the PSEI from March 15 to May 15, the period when most of our economic centers were in ECQ. As can be seen in the chart, anything that was a necessity did very well. The green boxes show you specific sectors like consumer staples such as supermarkets, telecoms as people used more broadband to remain connected at work, with friends or with school, and utilities as we consumed more water and electricity at home. They did very well. On the other hand, the ones that did not do well are those that were exposed to sectors that were affected by limited mobility. The simple way to think of it is this. Anything that people still need despite the lockdown benefited. We still ate, drank water, and in this age, we needed to be connected to the internet. Everything else that was secondary during the lockdown or things that people can dispense with or defer such as eating out, traveling, boarding airplanes, going to concerts are the ones that consumers shied away from. Hence the reason why these sectors were the losers during the lockdown. It's good to know that not all sectors are suffering from the effects of COVID and the lockdown. Mark, noting that most experts believe a recovery may come in 2021, what can investors learn from mystery when there is a recovery in the economy? It's still hard to assess when the pandemic will be over. But to answer your question, let's go back in time and look at 2017, which was a good year for the market. Why was it a good year? The market was moving on account of a very strong macro backdrop. GDP was at 6.7%, unemployment was well below historic levels at 5%, inflation was controlled at 25 to 3.2%, and the peso versus the dollar was stable. In that kind of environment, all sectors are in a better position to do well, whether it's consumer staples, banks, telcos, utilities, property companies. In fact, in 2017, only 3 out of 30 names in the PSEI ended the year down. They say a rising tide lifts all boats. Of course, we're not saying that this will exactly be replicated. But for sure, a sound macroeconomic backdrop bodes well for the strong performance of the market. My final question for you, Mark. What is your outlook on the market and the fund? We have started to look at how we will invest in the new normal post the pandemic, Zed. There are sectors that we believe would be resilient given the environment. More importantly, we are rotating to sectors that are clearly ahead of the others in terms of revamping operations and adapting to the new normal. However, as the pandemic continues, we continue to be cautious on service-related industries, especially those that would be at risk to social distancing practices. We continue to shy away from labor-intensive sectors such as consumer discretionary, where you have your restaurants and financial services like banks. We expect heightened market volatility to be a dominant theme for the short term. The silver lining is, this theme brings opportunities for those that can ride out market volatility. 
if you have the ability and willingness to take risk over a long-term horizon, then equities remains the better asset class in terms of risk-adjusted returns. We believe the economy hit its worst in the second quarter. The economy is gradually restarting and this is supportive of corporate earnings recovery. In terms of risks, we've seen what happens when stricter lockdowns are imposed. COVID-related risks will continue to cast a shadow on the market, especially if COVID cases continue to spike and remain uncontained. On valuation, it has certainly become more attractive. We believe that once more concrete signs on containing the virus emerge, and as economic recovery takes hold, the stage for market re-rating would be set and investors who are patient and bold enough to invest and stay invested would be rewarded. Thank you, Mark, for sharing these great insights on the Philippine stock market. Thank you also, Zed, for giving me this opportunity to share my views. That ends our third episode of our Investor Education video series. Please join us next time as we talk about the science behind diversification. Thank you and stay safe.